students, and welcome to today's lesson. I'm Mrs. Levine. Today, we will continue to investigate the question, how does motion in space compare with motion on Earth? Are you ready? Grab your pencil and your science journal, and let's get started. Do you like to play soccer? I do. I love to kick the soccer ball really hard to see how far it will go. I also love to practice controlling the ball. So I can pass it to my teammates during a game and maybe score a goal. Let's watch part of the soccer game to see the players and the soccer ball in action. Are you ready? Do you remember this video clip? Do you see how the soccer ball moves when the kids kick it? Oh, and do you see how far the soccer ball goes when it is kicked? Then when a different kid kicks the ball, the ball moves in another direction. The soccer ball seems to roll well on the grass. Last time we were together, we created an initial model of what it looks like when a soccer ball is kicked on Earth. We also watched this video clip of astronauts playing soccer on the International Space Station. We noticed that the soccer ball floats in space and bounces off the walls. We created an initial model of what playing soccer is like in space on the International Space Station. In space, a soccer ball floats and bounces off objects and people. On Earth, when the ball is kicked, it rolls until it stops. We also observed a soccer ball on Earth being kicked in a straight line when we watched this video clip. Your task after our last lesson was to sketch what a soccer ball looks like before, during, and after a kick on Earth. What did you draw? We'll make a model together as a class in just a moment. But first, I have another question for you. What do you think a soccer ball looks like before, during, and after a kick in space? Let's see if we can figure this out. How should we design our models of these two systems, the International Space Station and Earth? Well, what components do we need in each system to show the motion of a soccer ball? If we're playing soccer, we need a soccer ball in each model, and we need a foot to kick it. What else do we need? Oh, I know, we should say where the soccer ball is in each system. On the International Space Station, the ball is in the air. On Earth, the ball is on the grass. Now that we know all of the components in each system, let's look at the kick itself. We'll begin with what happens before the kick. What is happening with the ball in each system before the ball is kicked? Hmm. On Earth, the ball rests on the grass, so let's add the grass and the ball to the before kick section of our model. But what happens before a kick in space? Well, on the International Space Station, the ball just floats in the air, right? So in our International Space Station model, we can draw the ball in the air. Now let's add what happens during a kick. What happens to the ball when a student on Earth kicks the ball? The ball begins moving, right? And what happens to the ball when an astronaut on the International Space Station kicks the ball? The ball also begins moving. Finally, let's draw what happens after the ball is kicked in each model. Let's start with Earth. What happens? The ball is in motion. The ball moves forward until it eventually stops. And what happens after the kick on the International Space Station? The ball is also in motion. It continues to move through the air until it hits something. Let's add an explanation to our Earth model to describe what happens in this system. Before a kick, the soccer ball is not moving on the grass. During a kick, it starts moving. After a kick, it rolls across the grass. It eventually stops. We also need an explanation for our model on the International Space Station. Before a kick, the soccer ball floats in the air. During a kick, it starts moving away from the astronaut. After a kick, it continues to move through the air until it hits something. For example, a wall or another astronaut. There, we designed our two models and by adding and examining the components of each system, we were able to explain a lot about motion on both Earth and the International Space Station. Your first task after this lesson will be to draw the class anchor model in your science journal. You know, we've been talking a lot about the motion of objects inside a spacecraft, but what about the motion of the spacecraft itself? Let's think about the book Moonshot, The Flight of Apollo 11. I wonder how the spacecraft can continue to move toward the moon 
even when nothing seems to be pushing it. I am also curious about launching a spacecraft from Earth into space. How do you think something so heavy can lift off from Earth? And I wonder about the motion of the astronauts on the moon. Do you have any questions about that? Your second task for today is to write three questions that you still have about motion in space or motion on Earth. In the next lesson, we'll review and organize our questions. Let's review your task for today. Your first task is to draw the class anchor model and provide an explanation. Your second task is to record three questions you have about motion in space or motion on Earth. Hi students and welcome to today's lesson. I'm Mrs. Levine. Today, we will continue to investigate the question, how does motion in space compare with motion on Earth? Are you ready? Grab your pencil and your science journal and let's get started. Have you ever played basketball? Wow, the person in the video clip is doing a great job dribbling the ball. But I have a question. What would happen if this person just let go of the ball? Well, it would fall to the ground and bounce, right? But remember when we saw this video clip of astronauts playing with a soccer ball in space? What do you think would happen if one of these astronauts held the ball and then released it? Hmm, if you release a ball on Earth, it drops to the ground and then bounces. But if you release a ball in space, it floats, right? That difference makes me wonder, why do objects float in space but not on Earth? This is just one of many questions that I have about motion. After the last lesson, your task was to record three questions you have about the motion in space or on Earth. I wonder if some of your questions are the same as mine. Maybe when you watch the astronauts trying to eat, you wonder, how can you keep objects in space from floating away? And maybe as you watch the astronauts' food float away, you wonder, do all moving objects eventually stop? Did you wonder how do astronauts know which direction floating objects are moving? Or can you make an object move the same way more than once? After we read the book, Moonshot, The Flight of Apollo 11, did you ask, how does a rocket lift off of Earth? Or how do you know which way an object will move? Maybe you saw the illustration of parts of the rocket falling away from the spacecraft, and you wondered, why don't objects always move in a straight line? Or why do some objects move when others stay still? Maybe you were curious about the motion of objects on Earth and you asked, what makes a soccer ball stop rolling and why do objects on Earth fall? Maybe you wanted to ask, why do astronauts walk on Earth and the moon but float in a spaceship? Or maybe the floating objects made you wonder, can objects move without being touched by a person or another object? Wow, look at all of these questions. Can we group similar questions into categories? Once we sort these questions into categories, we'll have our driving question board. We will refer to the driving question board throughout the module as we seek to answer our questions about the motion of objects on Earth and in space. Does your question have to do with figuring out how an object moves or where an object will move next? Then your question falls into category one. How can we describe and predict an object's motion? We can put questions like, how can you keep objects in space from floating away? And do all moving objects eventually stop in this category? Maybe your question is about why the motion of objects does not always stay the same. If so, you can add it to category two. What can cause the motion of an object to change? Questions like, what makes a soccer ball stop rolling belong in this category? Well, wait, we still have one last question. It doesn't really fit into the other two groups, so let's put this question in its own group. We'll call this category other questions for now. Hey, do you notice that all of our questions are about how objects move in space and on Earth? If we can answer all of these questions, they will help us answer one big question. Why do objects move differently in space than they do on Earth? Do you still have questions about motion on Earth and in space? Your task after this lesson will be to pick one question you still have and sort it into one of these categories. 
How should we start investigating why objects move differently in space than they do on Earth? You know, now that I think about it, we've already started investigating the first question. How can we describe and predict an object's motion? Remember, we watched people playing with soccer balls both on the International Space Station and on Earth. We observed how the balls moved in both videos, and we described the motion of both soccer balls in our anchor model. But what would we need to do to be able to predict the motion of a soccer ball? I think we would need to make more observations. Maybe we could practice kicking a soccer ball hard and then soft. If we measured where the soccer ball landed, then maybe we could predict where the soccer ball would land the next time. In our next lesson, we'll explore the motion of a variety of different objects. I can't wait to continue investigating. Let's review your task for today. Sort your question into a category on the driving question board. 